I am Dr. Nageshwar Reddy. I am a gastroenterologist working at the Asian Institute of Gastroenterologists. Today I have with me Dr. Partha Pal, who is an interventional endoscopist in the IBD department, who has recently published an article in IGI, which we are going to discuss. The article is titled Water Pressure Assisted Endoscopic Spintrotomy with Band Assisted Mucosectomy and Polypectomy for a Complex Colonic Stricture in Crohn's Disease Guided by Pre Procedure Intestinal Ultrasound. Partha, could you briefly describe the background and motivation for this report? Uh, this Crohn's disease strictures are often complex whenever it is associated with fibrosis as well as multiple pseudopolyps around the stricture. And uh, we have seen that endoscopic balloon dilatation is not very effective giving a durable relief and surgery is associated with morbidity as well as chances of recurrence. So recently endoscopic strictureotomy has been described which has been shown to have higher reintervention free survival in recent uh, interim analysis of a randomized controlled trial. However, there is con still concerns regarding the safety of this technique because there is chance of perforation as well as bleeding. So we, our motivation was to find a safer an effective way of doing endoscopic stricturotomy using principles of endoscopic submucosal dissection uh, and extrapolating them for endoscopic stricturotomy in Crohn's disease strictures. So what was unique about this patient and what are the challenges that you faced? So this was a middle-aged man who had a, a stricture at a sigmoid descending colon junction which was very fibrotic with a pre-stenotic dilatation. He has failed endoscopic balloon dilatation in the past and that stricture was tight as well as it was obscured by multiple pseudopolyps as well as redundant mucosa from the opposite side. So the challenge was to uh, get a good dissection plane for endoscopic stricturotomy and avoiding injury to the opposite mucosa because it was protruding and avoiding the thermal injury in the opposite mucosa as well as preventing injury to the redundant protruding folds. So can you explain this actual technique that water pressure stricturotomy technique that you use? Yes. So um, in this technique actually for endoscopic stricturotomy you currently use insulated tip knife uh, which is a nano knife and uh, for this we use intermittent uh, water jet uh, through the therapeutic endoscope to displace the opposite mucosal fold to get a good dissection plane so that we can do a good endoscopic stricturotomy avoiding thermal injury to the opposite wall as well as keep away the uh, protruding mucosal folds from the opposite side. And this, what additional steps were required for this patient? So initially because the stricture was complicated with multiple pseudopolyps, we had to initially do a little bit of polypectomy to get into the dissection plane. Also on the opposite side there were multiple mucosal folds which were obscuring the visual field and obscuring the dissection. So water jet ha helped in that and then even after doing that we cannot cross the stricture. So what we have to do, we have to put a band in the protruding mucosa but actually that worsened the situation because the stricture became still narrow. So we have to go to the opposite side in the proximal side of the stricture, do a retroversion and see uh, how much mucosa is protruding and do a limited mucosectomy <coughs> as well as stricturotomy to uh, uh, attain a uh, good luminal di and diameter and uh, little bit of mucosal injury was there which was secured with the hemoclips. And how did the intestinal ultrasound contribute to this? Uh, <coughs> intestinal ultrasound was very critical in this case because intestinal ultrasound gave a point of care idea of the length of the stricture, the pre-stenotic dilatation, the nature of the stricture which was fibrotic because there was not much vascularity as well as uh, no inflammatory fat around the stricture. Uh, so gave us an idea that we can do it really endoscopically and we uh, actually did not perform a cross-sectional imaging because that was performed earlier and at the point of care we can take and dynamically assess the stricture uh, which is I think in future we are going to do more of that. And Partha, what are the outcomes in this patient? Uh, usually the patient actually did very well. Uh, at three months follow up, we had three months follow up, the patient's obstructive symptoms including the constipation improved a lot. We started the patient along with, uh, he was on immunomodulators that was azathioprine, along with that we started budesonide multimatrix uh, capsules which are to reach the left colon which has again have been shown for uh, ESD, uh, prevent ESD strictures and we have extrapolated here but we still don't know the efficacy but uh, actually that gave good results. We did a, also an intestinal ultrasound on follow up and it showed a significant reduction in the pre-stenotic dilatation as well as the luminal diameter is now better. And in your opinion, what are the broader implications of this technique in clinical practice? So I think uh, we need 
more safe and effective endoscopic ways to treat Crohn's disease strictures. Currently, we have balloon dilatation, but we know that one half of the patient will require reintervention and re, uh, resurgery will be required in many of the patients. So, I think endoscopic stricturotomy is a very good approach in those cases, <coughs> but it still has risk of perforation and bleeding. And these are the ways by which we can actually do these techniques more safely and effectively uh, improving patient outcomes. Thank you, Pata, for sharing these insights. I think this very clearly shows that how innovation and these techniques can be adapted to strictures in Crohn's disease and how this can actually improve patient outcome. Thank you IGI for giving us the opportunity to do this podcast. Thank you. Thank you.